Well, time to increase our love, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our Prince of Peace, who is our living mercy, and his mercy shall endure forever. His love comes forth as a new rainbow promise to fill ourselves with his blessedness, his kindness that's overflowing. Red and yellow, black and white, all truly are precious in his sight. And so in this hour of his love revealed as half full and not half empty, may the those of his faithful few go forward. And, you know, there's people out here wondering, who the heck is this guy Daniel? Uh, people won't believe uh, who, what I say. There is still uh, end time Elijah coming as surely as my name is Daniel. It is a conditional prophecy of the two witnesses. That Elijah will not be turning hearts of fathers to children, children to fathers, I guarantee you. People will be so happy when he lays dead in the streets of Jerusalem that they'll be sending presents unto one another, says the word of God in the book of Revelation. So who am I that comes at you? I am Elijah, line by line, precept by precept. I am the strong and mighty one. I don't know if you can see these. These are some of the books that I have written. Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Uh, <laughs> anyways, it don't matter what I say because I could give you all the truth in the world. Google my name, Daniel F. Owsley. Look up uh, Google Play and you will see that I have written all these books. Jesus is the healer of healers. And, uh, you know, I've written 200 titles in my day and all, most of them all about prophecy, but uh, it, it's irrelevant because the truth is, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of truth people have, their deceptions unto themselves outweigh the truth because they cannot see their own deceptions as something false. The Bible says the end time re revelator would have all authority uh, and hold the scepter of the kingdom. And I hold it right now. This is the scepter of Christ's authority. And I am the voice that will lead the children of God, a new exodus, an exodus of the wheat uh, away from the tares so they can be burned. And so it's time for the great falling away for the, 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 a change is now and it needs to happen quickly and we must beat our sword into the sickle to learn the ways of war no more, which only means to change our love from being conditional, which has never been love. Unless love is loyal and faithful and devoted, there is no love, it's shallow, it's a veneer, it's a knockoff. And then there are no shiny lights for that kind of cheap love that Putin has. He sees himself as a champion of Christianity, don't you know? And um, if, if the world does not reverse the curse in Europe, there will be one man left for seven horny women by the time uh, World War III comes to a conclusion, as Isaiah predicts. Uh, maybe not the end of that war, but I'm telling you, death is only ahead of us. Deuteronomy 18, 18. And I am the end time bringer of this good news that Christ wants to set us all free by the glory of his most resplendent, unconditional love. Because he says unto all people thereof, he says, I am the beloved, the blessed, the adored. I am your carpenter of the ages, your majesty of majesties. I am your God, you are my people, I have forgiven you, and I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, none will ever even need to be taught of me anymore, saith the Lord God, for all people of my love shall know me. The Lord says, for those who love are born of me and know me, because I am love, First John 4, 7. So now the veil has been ripped. 
and we can finally clearly see back to the Garden of Eden. The snake of Eden now has been removed. Otherwise, if he had not been removed, he would have immediately made our Lord God into a liar. For day and night, night and day, that old snake of Eden, uh, the, the, uh, the evil one, Satan, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, whatever you'd like to call Diablo, uh, he would have made God a liar because God has given his kingdom age covenant that was to come in the latter days. It says so in Jeremiah 31 1. And Christianity was never Israel. In the latter days, they have received their kingdom age covenant and they are now Chrislam. That is their new name that God promised he would appoint unto them in the latter days. Isaiah 62 2 said so. And so in these days, Israel has now inherited all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3 says so. And now all faith on earth is obsolete. Hebrews 8 says so. Because when you listen to uh, uh, what Paul says, he reiterates and says, in the latter days, when you hear those words, I am your God, you are my people, the Bible say so that you got obsolete religion that has always magnified a false god who is the false god? Any god that is a respecter of men that lo loves those best. Because if you're not a Christian, he hates you forever and ever and ever. That was never true. It's never been born again. It's always been born again. All those who love are born of God and know him because he is love. Uh, the, the best kingdom age prophet of all was Sir Isaac Newton, who said that Elijah would come forth standing uh, up with in literal interpretations of Bible prophecy admits much clamor and uh, opposition. So it's time to tear down, uh, as Jeremiah 1.10, Haggai 2.2 2 says, must happen. He's tearing down the mountains. He's lifting up the valleys. And from off this latter-day mountain, preaching the very truth the creationists need to grab a hold of so that uh, they're not mocked. The truth is, okay, uh, what is it, people? Is it A, the earth is new, B, the earth is old, or C, all of the above? Uh, which is it? So you got A, B, and C. What do you think? Okay, well, it's not A, and it's not uh, uh, B, so it's, it's C all of the above, and that points to God. But if people are opening these up backwards, then you end up with the wrong finger. Don't do that. Don't let love become a curse. It's time for the rainbow of love. And so in this hour, it's time for our sunshine to rise up, to destroy all the gross darkness of mankind. Uh, and his love will prevail, and love always wins, for he is our Lord of love, our Lord of always. And so I praise him incessantly without end. He is my magnificent obsession in a loveless world because everybody has uh, no love at all. Everybody has conditions on their love. People only want to love you uh, if or but or this, uh, some condition. But out goes the light on that, people. Love is not love unless, like Stallone says, and I'm a believer in Rocky just as much as I'm a believer in the Word of God because Sylvester was talking some Word of God through his message of being an overcomer. That is a message that Christ gave him. Uh, Christ does not uh, just speak to me. He speaks to all people. It is written, when you hear those words, God says, and I will write that law of love upon your hearts so that all people might know me from the least to the greatest, so that all people might be inspired of him and see the rainbows even if it doesn't seem to be any ahead. It's to have faith in love. We started off that way and we must become as a little child. Christ said that if we don't, we cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? We've got to change our love. We started off as a verb kind of love, in motion, as a child, uh, innocence about us. And then we let our love uh, grow and wax cold as we practice rationalizing, justify why it's okay not to love, not to forgive, not to be kind, not to smile. Well, and uh, there is no love if there's no forgiveness. So um, it was a beautiful thing today. I had a, a let's just say, an issue at church. Watch the video. 
It's here. Uh, and they sent over two police officers, not with any warning, just to see how I am. And uh, got to be uh, apologetic about my part. And I was. I created a nice little apology video. But I can't apologize for this loveless world. It has to be destroyed. All the religion of man. Uh, and it all flows together in harmony if people would even know what their own looks say. Problem is, uh, people are so apostate, they don't uh, never understood prophecy. So most of the people have never uh, focused on it. And But yet the Bible says of things concerning the future of God's sons and daughters and the work of his hands that were to command him. I did, and I wrote by a light for seven, eight minutes that was never plugged in. I had commanded God, I want a miracle. If, if, if I'm really the Elijah that you're telling me, I am. And then it came to pass that a prophet met me, told me the same thing, led me to the Bible, pointed to Isaiah 49, 4, where I would do everything in vain. And that was me. That was never Christ Jesus. He knew he was sending his word of oneness. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed not in vain for it because he has united us. He is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. The only true God is the good shepherd over all of us. And the only true God is the God who declares, I am the Lord God of all mankind, and all nations have now become his revelation. 10.7, the covenant's given, the mystery is over, Israel has inherited all mankind, and they are Chrislam.